If you have a pension or savings, then you're having an impact on the world, an ethical impact. If you have cash, for example, you're actually making your bank richer at a very low cost. Is that the kind of legacy you want to leave behind? I made banks richer. Probably not. If you want your investments to have a positive impact in the world, then you can invest in SRI funds. Those are socially responsible investment funds. But just because it's an ethical fund doesn't mean we don't consider how much that fund will cost us. Remember, we're not trying to make the fund manager richer, we're trying to make the world a better place. So what SRI funds are on offer, how do they work, and how much do they cost? Let's find out. Remember, this is not a recommendation. If you're thinking about SRI investments, you should seek independent financial advice. So let's start off with cash. Is it unethical? In order to understand what I mean by that, let's consider the alternative to cash, which is to buy shares or bonds. This is what a company's balance sheet looks like. The assets are what a company owns in order to make money. That could be factories or computers or machinery. And the liabilities tell you how the company's funded. In other words, how many shares does it have? How many bonds does it have? How many bank loans does it have? And the assets and the liabilities are exactly the same size. Because for every asset of the company, somebody had to pay for it. So when you buy a company's shares or bonds, indirectly you're funding that company. You're buying a slice of the liabilities so that the company can purchase assets. And if it's a well-governed company, they'll generate a return on those assets which will benefit you. In the case of a bank, some of the liabilities are the deposits of their customers because your deposit allows the bank to buy assets and to generate a return on that capital. If we take four large banks from the UK, we can look at just the liability side of their balance sheet. And I've split it up into deposits from customers and other liabilities, which is things like bank loans and bonds. You can see that about half of the liabilities come from bank deposits. Your cash at the bank is helping to fund your bank. And because interest rates are so low, you're charging them very little interest to hold your cash, which is great for the bank because they get very cheap funding from your deposit. So ask yourself, do you really want to make banks richer? Because that's exactly what you're doing when you hold cash in your bank account. So let's look at the alternative. If you buy a fund that tracks the FTSE 100, the cash that you put into the fund will buy the 100 largest companies in the UK. Here's an example of a FTSE tracker, and you can see that the value of the fund is in green. The benchmark, which is the FTSE 100, is the index that we're trying to track. And the tracking's not perfect, there's a tracking error that creeps in over time. But the tracker itself is dumb. All it's doing is copying the FTSE 100. If you do buy a slice of the FTSE 100, what are you funding? Well, one of the companies is BAE Systems. So you have become an arms manufacturer. Part of the FTSE 100 is British American Tobacco. So you're also a cigarette maker, a product which has been proven to cause cancer. Diageo sells spirits and alcoholic drinks, so you're also an alcoholic drink maker. Now some people wouldn't be too happy about funding these three companies. So what's the alternative? The alternative is socially responsible investment indices. One of the big players in this market is the company MSCI. You may not have heard of them, but for tracker funds, MSCI is a massive player. It's one of the world leading index companies and its largest global equity index is called the MSCI ACWI, which is the All Country World Index. Now you can take that extremely large global index and slice it up any way you like, into developed markets, emerging markets, and frontier markets. But you can also slice it up thematically. And one way of dividing the MSCI indices is according to the principle of ESG, where stocks are scored according to their environmental impact, their social impact, and the quality of their governance. MSCI calls this the three pillars of investing. The three pillars are subdivided into 10 different themes. So for example, the environmental pillar is split into climate change, natural resources, pollution and waste, and environmental opportunities. But what MSCI has tried to do here is distill the qualities of a company in which most people would be willing to invest if they were thinking along ethical lines. In order to do this, they have to commit huge amounts of resources, both in terms of data that they collect, but also the analysts who have to go through every single stock, 
and determine its exposure to 37 key issues. Then they produce an ESG rating for each of those companies. And that determines whether each company can be included in one of the ESG indices. And they produce a broad range of ESG indices. Some are based on particular themes like low carbon leaders or Catholic values. And others are much broader, such as the broad ESG index. So let's look at one in detail in order to understand how these indices work. This is the SRI version of the MSCI UK index, which is an index of UK stocks. The first thing MSCI does is to exclude certain industries. So anything to do with nuclear power, tobacco, alcohol, gambling and so on is taken out of the index. Next, they use their ESG ranking to find the best in class within each sector. And what they attempt to do is concentrate the index in the companies which have the highest ESG ratings, while at the same time not allowing any sector or region to dominate the index because that would increase the concentration risk of the investment. So on the left here, you can see the sector composition of the MSCI UK index, and on the right, the child index, which is the socially responsible index version of the parent. And you can see that broadly, the sector composition is similar. So for example, financials is 23% of the SRI index and 22% of the parent index. So let's look at the 10 biggest stocks in those two indices. Straight away, you can see that for the MSCI UK index, the top 10 constituents has stocks which aren't allowed to be in the SRI index. For example, British American Tobacco or Diageo, which produces alcoholic drinks. And when we look at the child index, we can see that indeed those stocks are not included. And for the stocks which remain, the weights have obviously increased. So, for example, Vodafone Group goes from 3% of the index to almost 12%, four times the weight. And the total weight of the top 10 stocks increases from about 20% to about 65%. So one unfortunate side effect is that the risk is concentrated in fewer stocks, and that increases the risk of the MSCI UK SRI index versus its parent. So if the share price of Vodafone halves, it'll have a much bigger impact on the SRI version of the index than the parent, because the weighting is four times higher. And again, you can see that concentration if you look at the index characteristics. MSCI UK has 109 stocks, whereas MSCI UK SRI only has 38 stocks. And the average weighting of a stock increases from about 1% to about 2.6%. And that reduces the diversification of the index and increases its volatility or risk. But historically, it hasn't hurt the returns of this index. If we compare the parent versus the child index, you can see that the socially responsible index has actually outperformed the non-SRI version. So here's a list of 10 large SRI exchange traded funds, which are traded on a London stock exchange. If we look at the cost of the funds, we can see that actually they're quite low they'd be roughly in the mid-range for most large ETFs. They range from about 0.28% per year to 0.53% per year. One thing you have to be slightly careful of is the currency risk. Some of them are not sterling denominated, and that means that you take a currency risk. If sterling strengthens versus the other currency, the value of your investment will fall. You can also see that within the umbrella of SRI funds, you can choose the region, so you have a wide range of MSCI regional SRI indices, from a global fund, to North America, to Europe and the Middle East, to emerging markets, and also the UK-specific fund, which we saw previously. If we look at the US, generally the funds are larger, and you also have more choice in terms of the theme of the fund. Here are 10 large funds from the US, and they really are large. You can see that the largest one, KLD, has almost a billion in assets under management. And you can see that the fees are also quite reasonable, ranging from 0.2% per year to about 0.5% per year. The funds also tend to be larger than their UK equivalents. So let's take a look at three of the largest funds in detail. We can start with the largest, which is KLD. This tracks an index created by MSCI called the KLD 400 Social Index. This was launched in 1990 and it used to be called the Domini 400 Social Index. The parent of the index is the MSCI USA IMI Index. And in this case, the SRI version of the index 
has underperformed its parent. If we look at its composition, the top 10 members of the index are dominated by tech companies, Microsoft and Alphabet, which is the parent of Google. And in fact, the index is very tech heavy. If we look at the sector composition, IT makes up almost a third of the index, because a lot of tech companies make it past the ESG screening process. In order to qualify for the KLD 400, the ESG rating has to be above double B. As with the UK example, certain industries are excluded immediately. Then the next stage is to add companies into the index which have high ESG performance. An MSCI tries to keep the sector composition the same and not to concentrate too much into single stocks. But as you can see with Microsoft, the weighting for the SRI index is twice that of the parent index. And these top 10 stocks account for a quarter of the index. And so inevitably, if these tech stocks underperform, so will the SRI index. The second fund we'll look at in detail is CRBN, which targets companies which produce low carbon emissions. This is a global share index, and it tries to support companies which are less dependent on fossil fuels. So if you look at the weights of the index versus its parent, you'll see that the stocks which have less dependency on fossil fuels have a larger weight than stocks which emit high amounts of carbon. If you look on the right hand side, you'll see the expense ratio at the top. That's just 0.2%. So the fee is very reasonable for this fund. It tracks over a thousand stocks globally. And the assets under management are about 300 million. If we look at the stocks where it's underweight, in other words, it has a lower weight than the parent index, it's unsurprising to see that Exxon, Chevron, BP and Total are penalized because of their dependency on fossil fuels. But so is Warren Buffett's fund, Berkshire Hathaway. Because indirectly, the stocks which Berkshire Hathaway owns are dependent on fossil fuels. And if you look at the sector weightings, you'll see it's underweight energy, but also materials and utilities, and overweight in industrials and financials. The third and final fund we'll look at is SHE, a very apt acronym because this is the Gender Diversity Index. If you look at the 500 largest companies in the US and break down the gender composition by seniority in the company, what emerges is this very disturbing pyramid shape. While the labour force overall, which is at the bottom of the pyramid, is 50-50 male and female, as you ascend the seniority of the company, the number of females dwindles very rapidly. And once we get to the board level, only one in five of the employees is female. And of the 500 CEOs, only 4% are female. The Spider Gender Diversity Index rewards companies which have greater gender diversity at senior management level. In a research project carried out by MSCI, they found that the return on equity for companies with strong female leadership was higher than for companies which didn't have such leadership. So in theory, fundamentally, these companies should outperform because gender diversity at the senior level has a positive impact on the productivity of the company. Perhaps you like to keep the concept of investment and ethics completely separate. Because of course you could just lobby for a better world outside the investment world. Or perhaps you think the ESG process is fundamentally flawed. We love your feedback, so please tell us what you think. You can tweet us at Pensioncraft, message us on Facebook, or leave a comment on YouTube. And if you like these videos, please subscribe to our channel.